Can you draw out Leviathan with a hook, a Leviathan with a hook, or his tongue with a cord, which you let down like a fisherman? Can you put a hook into his nose, or bore his jaw through with a storm? Will he make many supplications unto you? Will he speak soft words unto you? Will he cut a covenant with you? Will you take him for a servant? Will you play with him as you play with a bird? Or will you bind him with your maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him amongst the merchants? Can you fill his skin with barbed irons? Or his head with fish spears? Lay your hand upon him and remember that battle no more. Your ass will be done. Behold, the hope is here of him is in vain who does. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him. None is so fierce, fierce that dare to stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? <laughs> Shalom, Israel, Judah. That's from the book of Job, chapter 41. And this is Yahuwah pretty much giving Job reproof. And he's giving him reproof referencing Leviathan. And if some of you might say, well, who is Leviathan, DFG? Well, see, if you were studying the Tanakh, if you were studying your history book, if you're Israel, you would already know who Leviathan is. But I'll give you a quick little overview. A vi Leviathan is the creature, some would call a monster, and I'm not talking about a whale, a monster that's in the sea, and it travels the seas, the flat earth wide. Remember, there's more water than land on this earth, but this monster controls down there. Everything down there is in control of. And it's such a fierce answer. It, you know what it brings to mind? Brother Mendez and I were talking yesterday, and I'm not going to get caught up off for something. I'm not going down the rabbit hole here. But he was telling me that he was watching uh, the latest um, King Kong versus Godzilla. And he was talking about, you know, just how that King Kong, I guess, and Godzilla was on, out of control, and they had to go down into the mountains, into somewhere under the ground, uh, in the middle of the earth, to bring up these monsters to save the world. And I thought, I, and you know, I, I laughed when we were talking about it. I said, yeah, because they know the truth. See, they know what's hidden down in this earth was placed down there by Yahuwah, really by Michael and, and the other archangels, uh, Penuel, Raphael, Gabriel, when these demons sinned against man. And not only did they sin against man when they laid with women, but they taught men all kind of evil and wickedness. And God judged them for it. And so he placed them under the earth and buried them, many in the deserts. All those pyramids that you see out there, on Giza and all those other places, really all over this earth, those are tombstones, brothers and sisters. Giant tombstones. Because there were giants placed down there. Just like you go to a graveyard and you see the little you know, appropriate tombstone on the, over a grave. Well, all those pyramids of gravestone. That's why you always see them digging in. And what are they digging under the pyramids for? To find what? Bodies. I know some of you say, well, brother, these, of course we knew that. Well, okay. Give yourself two stars. But a lot of brothers and sisters of ours, they don't know what those things are. They just think they're just wonders of the world. Architecture because for the sake of architecture. No, brothers and sisters, wherever you see pyramids, there are graves under them. Some pyramids are obvious, some are not. Some are covered with grass and, and dirt, and you would never know. Or some of them would look like mountains and hills. Leviathan, the Leviathan on, on the other hand, this is what brother, when I when I was when brother Dennis and I with the Mendez, <laughs> I know you don't mind, but brother Mendez and I were, 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 were corresponding. I was reminding him. I say, don't you think for one second that the seed or the children of those angels who came down here and polluted, polluted themselves with women do not communicate with their children? 
Why wouldn't they? And don't, and don't and think not that their children would not know their history. Maybe not the little ignorant heathens who are running around here with you know with mask on their face or mask on their heads. <laughs> not those idiots. The ones who go run the war just because they want to be a patriot. We're not talking about the them. But those rich men who send those idiots out there to do their, their do to do their their killing, they know. They know the truth. And so when they make these movies, Game of Thrones included, they know exactly what they're talking about. You know, for most people, you know, we're like us, we're being entertained. And we think, oh, it's just entertainment. There's nothing true to that. But in all actuality, it's simply art imitating life. And I know that might be a little bit too much for some of my brothers and sisters, you know, to, 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 to get your mind around. But it's interesting because all of these so-called believers, wherever they find themselves believing, especially to my to to, to the two-third Christian Israelites, <laughs> you know, they they they're strong belief, but but if you ask them about Leviathan, they don't know what you what are you talking about, Brother DFG. Then my question comes back, well, what Bible studies are you guys a part of? How do you guys learn? Are you being told or are you being taught? Because it's sitting right here in the book of Job that there are monsters in the ocean and they're not sea, they're not whales and sharks. They're creatures of the magnitude that if you go down there near it, you will never live to tell about it. And Yahuwah put them down. There are some in the earth, behemoth, in the deserts. We studied that just the other day in, in, in what, Enoch chapter? Let me go over there real quick. <laughs> you know your brother, sword and hammer. I'm going to come back here. But let go, let's go over there. No, I'm not going to come back to Job. I just wanted to just bring that out. And this is Yahuwah telling us that, these, that that Leviathan is down there and that he don't play no games with men. And Yah put him down there. Because the last statement in, in Job chapter 41 and 10, he said, there is none so fierce that dare to stir him up. In other words, you go down there and bother him like they went into the core of the earth to bring up those monsters to fight against the King Kong and Godzilla. Granted, I know there's no such thing as a King Kong and a Godzilla, but they're just, you know, they're made up entities to cover up the true ones. Just like the you know, New Testament is made up to cover the Tanakh. And I'm going to leave a link in here where you got this Edomite heathen who professed to be us but not us talking about just that particular thing and the inconsistencies there. But I'll leave that in the link. I don't want to get off track. But look back here. He says, look, verse 10, none is so fierce that dare stir him up. But then who is able to stand before me? This is Yahuwah saying you say, none of y'all would go down there and stir up Leviathan or the, or the water Godzilla or whatever else three-headed things that come out of there or many heads, fire breathing, you name it. He said, none of you will be bold enough to go stir him up. Yet, you want to challenge me. This is what he's telling, you know, Job, when Job goes on his whole dissertation about you know, woe is he and, you know, and he wished he had never been born and all of that type of stuff. So it's sitting right here in the book is what I'm saying. And these are the things we should know because these things are written by Yahuwah to tell us some things. There's a lot of talk right now about, you know, what's under the oceans, what's under the waters. Most of y'all probably know this already, but almost 90% of the ocean has never been explored. The depths of the ocean, not the width, the depth down under 90 percent they don't have any idea what's down there better yet they do have an idea what's down there they just know better than to go down there and disturb it or steer it up and so for those who think that this book is not true it might be time for you to reconsider that just saying young old whoever you might be if you're listening to my voice you might want to reconsider what you're thinking. 
And if nothing else, at least take some time to explore it because there are many, many, many truths here that I can assure you a lot of things that you believe right now that you think are real are lies. And guess what? <laughs> There's truth hidden behind those lies to cover up the truth. You know, there's a word called uh, cognitive dissonance. If you're not familiar with that word, you can look it up. But it's a simple word that simply says that people like to be given convenient lies to cover up uncomfortable truths. In other words, people would much prefer not to know than to know. Just let me be ignorant. I don't need to know all that. But just because you don't know what's coming doesn't mean it's, it's not coming, brothers and sisters. Just want to remind you that just because you don't believe does not mean it's not real. And you're going to have to deal with reality regardless. We all have to deal with reality when it comes. And you heard me talking just recently. You know, there's a final common denominator that all of us have to face. It's called death, physical death, not spiritual. You don't die. Your soul lasts, lives forever. And at that particular time, all these things that, you know, many out there were challenging in terms of what it, whether or not it was true or not. Is the word true, Bible true, creator true? At that particular time, all those answers, all those questions are going to be answered. It's called a day of reckoning. Some call it a day of judgment. But let's go take a look over here. You know, when we start talking about, again, are there monsters? <laughs> I hate to use the word monsters, but it's probably the word that everyone can relate to. Are there monsters in the earth, in the ocean? Beyond the firmament. Beyond it. The dome. <laughs> and the answer is absolutely yes according to the scripture, but also according to history. And again, when these archaeologists start digging down there, going up under there, you follow me? Sometimes they come back with, with, with things they didn't intend to, to, to get. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes they come back with things they did not intend to get. Again, I'm going to leave a link in, 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 in this, you know, <laughs> in, in, on, on this particular message There's going to be a link down there Open that link up Because what that link is going to tell you about Is some soldiers Who are in a rock fighting In that, I think it was Desert Storm And how that many of those soldiers Have come back And you know what they said brothers and sisters Whatever they were blowing up in those deserts Not people when they, Whatever they were disturbing in the desert because that's what I'm going to go show you over here in the book of Enoch. He said, they are saying that whatever they were disturbing in the desert, put a hex on them. What is a hex? H-E-X. That's another word for a curse. Well, what kind of hex? Well, when you get a chance, I want you to read it. But I'll give you a quick little synopsis. What they were saying is that when they came back home, and this is around 2012, so that might not have been Desert Stone, whichever the last one was. They say when they came back home, one of them said they were seeing little uh, pictures of a little girl in their kitchen. Cooking in the kitchen. Others have said they've seen all kind of other voices. They've seen all kind of supernatural things haunting them, vexing them. And for the record, many of you probably know this, but on average, every day, at least one, what is the number? I, I want to say it's 80. There are 80 suicides every day from people who served between, you know, Desert Storm and that uh, Operation, whatever, Desert Storm and the one before that. You know the two, the two bushes, the two wars they had. Every day committing suicide. And this auto talks a little bit about it. And they're seeing, they're doing it because they're, they're hearing voices and they're seeing things. And of course, they're gonna, you're going to see, they're going to try to play it off as some kind of mental illness. Of course, that's what they're going to say. But when you read this article, brothers and sisters, this is not going to sound like men who are not, who are local, who not local, but who are dealing with, you know, um, it is mental trauma, some form of PSTD. 
But hey, just because you got PSDT doesn't mean you're crazy. In other words, you don't know what you're talking about. You're, you're, these are, you're hallucin hallucinating. Those are clever words the heathens come up with to deny true challenges that people are going through. And I call bullshit on anyone who want to try to marginalize, you know what I'm saying, you know, someone who's under uh, some type of possession just because it doesn't fit their narrative. My eldest son served, you know, in, in Desert Storm. Oh, the, the, yeah, the Desert Storm, the first one. And came home, you know, dealing with demons. Couldn't sleep. Ultimately, you know, lost his life. It, it overtook him. Trying to cover it, trying to deal with the stress and to deal with, you know, with the fatigue and the mental anguish. Lost his life behind that. So for those who want to, you know, marginalize this and say it's not real, you know, you can kick rocks with that foolishness. But that's what's going on. And now you got some of these men who are taking it out on, on, on citizens, civilians. The guy in Massachusetts last week, if you guys heard of, not Massachusetts, Maine. That guy had served in, 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 in that same war, been in, in, been in the military for 20 years. And decided to take his, you know, his assault rifle and go to two places and 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 unalive, mur kill, murder, whatever word you want to use. I think 16, 17 people. And no one knows why he did it. They just know he spent 20 years there. I'm telling you, them voices and them demons possessing them. And when they don't take their own lives, you can believe if they don't take their own, they're going to be looking to take yours. Or maybe someone you love. But we want to deny this that because these heathens are covering it up. Just like they're covering up what's in the sea. What they're covering up what's in the, in the, in the desert. Behemoth is there. That's another creature. And Yahuwah is telling us about these creatures, brothers and sisters. So I'm not conflating anything. It's written in the book. But they're coming back and they're saying how all these things are happening. And it's interesting because uh, this article is talking about something that happened in 2012. And now they're bringing it out in 2023, almost a decade later. Now they want it to over a decade later. Now they want to talk about it. I wonder why. I wonder if they know that these other things are started, going to start to appear. Not only little girls in the kitchen. I wonder now because they've opened that portal, CERN, all seven of them, <laughs> seals were broken, opened. They know it's coming. Now, and so what they're trying to really do is get you ready for it. That's why you got all these, again, DC, you know, uh, Marvel, uh, what are the others? You know, with all these superheroes, these gods, the Watchers. The Fallen Watchers is really who you're looking at. They just gave them new names. Captain America. The Hulk. Black Panther. Wolverine. And they brought them down, made some of them the size of men, because some were the size of men. But others were giants as tall as 500 feet. We studied that just the other day in our Bible study. 510 feet, to be exact. Men were like grasshoppers standing next to them. Oh, that's in the book too. Numbers chapter 13. Start reading about verse 32 in the Torah. See, what kind of teachers that don't talk about these things, brothers and sisters? What kind of teachers will not give you, you know, uh, references where you can look this stuff up and find out about these things? What kind of teachers that want to have you just saying, oh, it's all good. And, you know, the creator loves everybody. And all of us are the children of the most high. No, that's not true. I'm going to get to that in a moment, too. But what's under that ocean? They've been trying to pull it up. How many times have we seen those tests, so-called nuclear tests in the waters? all over this flat earth. 
We've all seen those mushroom clouds they shoot in the water. And every now and then we see them, what, those same mushroom clouds in the deserts. They just tell them, oh, they're just doing that to test their nuclear weapons. Seriously? Well, by the time we stop believing their lies, brothers and sisters, they're releasing what's under the earth because they're being driven and told to do it. And the Most High is going to allow them to do it because we're at the end. If you go back to Daniel chapter 12, what did, what did, Daniel, what did, what did Gabriel tell Daniel? Daniel, seal up the book to the time of the end. Seal up the book or the books until the time of the end. Because Daniel wanted to know. He said, well, tell me all these, these things you're talking about. Ten toes, kingdoms. I don't understand these things. He says, not for you to know, Daniel. But there will come a time for generations long after you for them to know. Enoch chapter 1 talks about that. The things that are written in Enoch, a lot of those things uh, Enoch said to, 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 to our people, these things are not for right now. These things are for the end of time. That's Enoch chapter 1. Let's go over there. And again, what kind of study that leaves out truth? Mm, I don't know. Those that are based, centered on religion. Because religion is about control. It's about information. It's not about understanding. They don't want you to know their secrets. At least not until it's too late. When you can do nothing about it. And we're there. But let me give you this one. Look at if it, this is Enoch, the book of Enoch, chapter one. If a whole Enoch not a real Enoch is a real book. Enoch talked about Noah, it talks about talks about everything, brothers and sisters. Well, I don't believe it's a real book, brother. Then, I, sister, uh, well, why don't you go to the book of Genesis? Chap you, if you believe in the book of Genesis, and I think many of you do, I'm talking about those Christians out here who don't believe in the, the can, un, not books that are not canonized. Well, I'm sure you believe in the book of Genesis, the beginning, one of the five books of Moses. Well, in that five book, if you go to, to Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, does it not talk about Enoch? That he was translated, that he never died, that he was called up to the heavens because Yah was revealing things to him? What, you don't believe in Genesis no more now because your brother just said that? So Genesis now is not canonized because your brother just shared that? Because that same Enoch that's in Genesis 5 and 24 is the same Enoch that I'm talking about right now. What actually happened to him? Genesis, Genesis, Genesis left out the details. But in these last days, y'all say, no, we're going to bring up that those, those details. That's what Daniel was talking about. Knowledge being cooked, the books being unsealed. The same Enoch as that Enoch. So if you're going to deny this, then deny all of the book. Deny your own beginning. <laughs> now, that doesn't change that it's not true, but, you know, just that's the position you're going to hold, hold it. But if you're going to hold it, hold it. You can't pick and choose what you're going to believe and not believe. That's called reprobated mind. But this same Enoch said this. He said, look, look at this is Enoch 1. And I'll start reading to you from verse 6. It says, great fear and trembling shall seize them even to the ends of the earth. The earth has ends because it's flat. The lofty mountains shall be troubled. The lofty mountains shall be troubled. And the exalted hills depressed, melting like a honeycomb in the flame. That's all this bombing that you see going on. All these so-called nuclear explosions that you're hearing about in the deserts, in the oceans. All the lofty mountains shall be troubled and all the exalted hills depressed, melting like a honeycomb in the flame. And the earth shall be emerged and all these things are in it will perish. For all these people want to say we're negative. 
It says here, the earth is going to perish. Now, what are you going to do about that, non-believer? Because the same book says where the earth is going to perish, it also says there's going to be a day of reckoning for everybody who ever lived on this earth, including you. But they call it, we call it resurrection or judgment day. What are you going to say then when you realize that somehow or another, through frustration, unbelief, manipulation, being force fed, you turned against religion because you didn't understand religion had nothing to do with Yah. I'm here to tell you it's time to reconsider, not religion. Hell no, we don't go. But when it comes when it comes down to turning back to Yahuwah, um, you're coming whether you want to or not, as the old saying goes. Question is, are you gonna come voluntarily so you can have a chance to determine your outcome? Are you gonna be awakening by forced to be sentenced without any ability to change that outcome? Just think about that. Let me continue on here. It says, the earth shall be immersed and the things that are in it will perish while judgment shall come upon all, even upon the righteous. That includes us, the one third, those of us who actually believe the Tanakh is true. The apocryphal books are true. The Torah is true. Yeah, we know that people have added things to it and, and tried to take things away from it. We were warned that they would do that. Maccabees told us that 3 and 48. First Maccabees 3 and 48 said they would paint their image and likeness in our Torah. So we know there are some lies that they added to it. <clears throat> but the word is still true. Nobody can lie and add lies to the truth. Doesn't change the truth. It just means the part they said was a lie. That's why you got to discern it. Study it out. Investigate it. We call studying. To get to the truth. To be able to divide, you know, the lies from the truth. Interesting enough, I don't want to digress. Me and one of our dear sisters were in a conversation just the other day about, you know, some in uh, incident that happened between uh, King David and, and a, a, a heathen who had uh, killed King Saul. We're trying to figure out who had killed King Saul. And it looked like there was controversy there until we had the chance to study it out. Praise y'all to the dear sister because she, she, <laughs> she, she was concerned and I thought I understood it completely and I had to go back and realize, oh, shit, I missed something. But we understand it better now and we realize the book is not consistent inconsistent. The book is true. But many have tried to add things to the book or try to take things away the book like saying that the, the Torah Tanakh is no longer, you know, in effect. That kind of foolishness. But in terms of the act, the absolute truth that's written here, that truth is going to last to the end of time as we know it. And that's a fact. It doesn't matter what anybody believes or don't believe. You don't believe, you don't believe. Doesn't mean you're right. Yeah, you know, Solomon tried to tell us that he's in, in what is that Proverbs 14 and 12? What do he say? That the way that seems right to you. <laughs> and, and, but he said that same way you that that makes you think that you know the way you think and you feel like, hey, I know I'm right about this, y'all wrong, I'm the only one right. What he said, that thing gonna lead you right to your own death. That thinking. That corrupted thinking. And it was corrupted not because you're corrupt, you're corrupted because you were polluted with religion and lies. And even worse. Just said, don't believe none of it. But again, just because you don't believe it's true doesn't mean it's not true. Like the man said, I would never go to jail. I would never do anything to go to jail. And then ends up in jail falsely accused. What well, that happens. So those saying never say never. Better yet, <laughs> you know, you can trust what you're thinking, but you need to verify to make sure it's true. That's where these studies come into play. 
with teachers who know what they're teaching, <laughs> not trying to cover up their lies or, or heathen lies that were passed down. The last part it says here, but to them shall he give peace and he shall guard the elect. Guard the elect. What does that mean? Guard the elect. It means protect the elect among us. See, one of the things that we know that's when all of this, this you know, crap hits the fan, because I'm heathen going to blow some things up. It's coming. But you see happening over in the Middle East, the Far East, Russia, all these things that are BRICS Plus related, it's going to end in a war. <laughs> and the repercussions are going to be felt right here in the United States. Everywhere else too. Doesn't matter if you're South America, North America, Canada, the islands, you, there's going to be no place to hide. So stop listening to those idiots who are telling you to get on cruise ships because they're going to take you down to somewhere in South Africa. And then when you get off the ship, y'all going to have a, 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 a escort crew that's going to lead y'all to the wilderness. Seriously. But there will be protecting for the elect because we're in Abiyah's truth. And he said that the elect will be spared. Not because we prepped. Because Yah is going to put a ring of protection around us. His shield. That's what he's talking about in, in, in Proverbs chapter 35. Chapter 30 verse 5 and 6. So the word of the Torah is a shield. It means a guard or a protecting or a fence or a wall. Around the elect of Yahuwah. Us. Those who are in his truth. In his Torah. Who long ago, long ago walked away from the New Testament. Some not so long ago, but we all walked away from it. In all religion, not just the New Testament. We didn't, we didn't not only put down their new book, their book that serves their gods. You know, Paul, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, Timothy, Luke, Mark, Matt. You know, the, the, the book that, 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 that emphasized their gods and tried to minimize the creator, Yahuwah. They will not be protected. No more than they were protected when, you know, they were hung on trees and burned at the stake screaming and howling for Jesus. No, Jesus showed up. That's religious talk. You know, Buddha ain't gonna Buddha ain't gonna save you. Krista, Kali, Amara, Jaro, Apollyon, Apollo, they ain't gonna, they're not coming either. That's not what they do. They don't save men. They pollute them. They corrupt them. They destroy them. And that's who most of our people are serving as gods, religious figures, saviors and redeemers, messiahs. And what else it goes on to say, my brothers and sisters? Enoch 1, verse 7, but to them shall he give peace, talking about the elect, us. He shall guard the elect towards them and he shall exercise or give us clemency. I mean, he's not going to hold us accountable to what he's going to hold them accountable for. Then shall all belong to Yahuwah. Then shall all that belong to Yahuwah be happy and blessed. And the splendor of Yahuwah shall illuminate them. We're going to be the lights in these dark days. And we are the light in these dark days. And if you're coming out of religion or coming out of atheism or non-belief, you're going to be a light too. Young man, young woman, old woman, old man, gray hairs and gray beards. Y'all have no respect of a person, so just living 80 years is not going to get you anywhere but where you belong. The broad path to destruction or the narrow path 
to righteousness through obeying Abiyah's Torah, as it is written in the Tanakh. But let's move over just a little bit here. Enoch chapter 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, look at this, brothers and sisters. Now we're back to the desert. Why are they doing all these things in the Middle East? Are they going to have harsh repercussions for men? Famine, shortage of goods, resources, every, that is 100% correct. That's why you should be prepping. <laughs> but prepping is not redemption. A lot of heathens are prepping and they're going to get destroyed with all that stuff they prep with. They run it in this cave. They all got their little safe bunkers and stuff. The book said that stuff going to be depressed. It's going to fall right down on their heads. They'll get buried alive. So prepping is not redemption. But prepping is important. But look what it says here. Back to the desert. This is Enoch chapter 10. Look how this reads, brothers and sisters. I'm going to, I'm going to start at verse 5. He said, And now teach them how they may escape, and how his seed may remain in all the earth. And Yahuwah said to Raphael, Bind Azazel, or Azael. That's the demon who taught sorcery and witchcraft, war. Who, who encouraged the heathens to lay down, to, who encouraged the Israelites to lay down and procreate with the heathens. Although the book said not to do it, all through the book says not to do it. It's an abomination. Not because, you know, anybody is prejudiced or racist. It's what the word says. Took the, took, they wrote a New Testament to, to, to overthrow Yah's word. <laughs> Isn't that something? Well, see, see, I was guilty, I was guilty, but, but because of Jesus, I'm not guilty, I'm not guilty no more. All right, <laughs> believe that if you want. If you desire to, then desire to, but I'm telling you, your word don't change, so his word does not change. He says, I am not a man that I should change. And I don't, that's Numbers 23 and 19, why don't you go read that? And then over in the book of Malachi, he says, Yahuwah, I'm Yahuwah, I change not. Why don't you go read that? Rather than just believe the New Testament lies that they put there to, to, to lie on the Creator, to deceive, yes, us. If you can't beat them, just find a way to replace them. So they came up with their replacement theology called religions, all of them. We're not a part of a religion. We're just, we're, we, are, we are Israelites. The chosen of our creator. You can read about us. You can read that acknowledgement of who we are in the book of Isaiah 43. See, I chose you. You are mine. That's an exclusive group. But look what it says here in Enoch 10. Let me go a little bit farther. Verse 6. And Yahuwah said to Raphael, bind Azazel hand and foot <laughs> and cast him into the darkness, the opening of the desert, which is in Dual, Dual, <laughs> Dubai, that whole region. That's why so many of our people are getting attracted. They're running over there. A lot of daughters of Zion going over there, getting polluted by them Arabs. The seed of the fallen. Some of them, <laughs> but they're everywhere. You know, the non-melanated ones. You know, the skin's like white, but you can see the blood through their skin, which makes them look pinkish. That's why they're running over there. But anyway, he so cast them in there, cast them in the desert, and throw upon them hurdle pernit stones. A pernish stone is a pyramid. Covering them with darkness. 
That's why they digging down in there. They need lights and everything else to go deep. And there they shall remain forever to cover his face that he may not see light. And in that great day of judgment, let him be cast into the fire. That great day of judgment. That's what I was speaking about a little bit earlier. The day of judgment. The day of, of, of reckoning. The day of recompense. That every single one of us are going to be uh, present. <laughs> Some to the, to the splendor that you heard me read in, in uh, Enoch chapter 1. And others to the eternal lake of fire. All those who heard this truth and rejected it. Not heard it from my mouth, heard it from the book. All those who just rejected it, period, didn't care. Yeah, them too. No one is going to escape judgment. No one. That's why I say all. You heard me read that a moment ago. All, including the righteous, are going to have to, you know, go before the high court. And see what the law says about them and their actions while they were here, however long. And this is the last thing I'll share with this. I know I've said a lot, and I know we started off with Leviathan and what's under the ocean, what's coming, these men who are damaged, but they're really not damaged. They got a hex put on them. They were over there fighting out there in those deserts, and they woke those demons up. And them demons came back to came back home with them, back to America with them, or wherever they came from. And now they got to deal with it. But that's what happens when you serve these heathens, and their militaries, or churches, government systems, financial institutions. That's what happens to you? Not all of you, because some of you repented and turned, and Yah has blessed you and restored you and redeemed you. Like me. But many have not. Kept doing the same old thing. Thinking that somehow if I just keep on keeping doing what I've been doing, I'm going to get something different. And that is just absolutely not true. True change means a different way, a different man, a different belief, a different attitude, a different action. From the, from the heart too. Not just thinking about it. Actually living it out, performing it. Other than that, it's not change. It's just an idea gone a while. Moving fast, going nowhere, so to speak. A whole bunch of information. No substance. That's why Solomon said, with all you're getting, get an understanding. Did he not? Solomon, it's Proverbs 4 and 7. That's Solomon. You might well say Solomon. Wisest man who got all of his wisdom from Yahuwah. What did he say? With all you're getting, get an understanding. Because, and then Hosea turned back around and said, you're going to get destroyed for a lack of knowledge because inside of your knowledge there is no understanding. There's no substance. That's why we're here to teach, brothers and sisters. So you have substance. To go along with that information that you have. And you're invited to be a part of us. We'll be here tomorrow night, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock uh, Eastern time, y'all willing. 516-597-9598. One hour of studying, listening, learning. <laughs> Saw and hammer time. If you care. But let me let me seal this back up, this message. Look at look look, and I want you to think about this, brothers and sisters. Think about what they told us about everybody are the children of God. That's how they say. I know it's Yahuwah. Our Yah, our creator has a name. He's not a title. He's not a man. Man is a title. <laughs> What's your name? Our creator has a name. And those who know him, they know him by his name. Those who didn't know him did not know his name. 
But in these last days, as knowledge has increased, now in the books have been reopened, now we know him by his name. Now do we know him by his name, we know who his true people are. And they're not the black hats or whatever the hell they call them. The hijackers. The so-called Israeli. <laughs> That's not Israel. But look what it says in the book of Enoch, the book they don't want you reading, although as Genesis 5 and 24 said, he was here <laughs> and he did leave information for our people to follow in the last days, because that's what he said in the last days. I read that to you in one. These things will be revealed. Now they're being revealed. I just hope you, if you're an Israelite and you didn't know it, that you're ready to accept your, your true identity now. That you're ready to, to, to acknowledge who you are and be grateful and thankful that you were chosen. Instead of still denying it. Oh, he's all the same, being like the, you know, those idiots. You know, like the one kind of mind is Jason Whitlock and Geno Jennings. Those two. And uh, what's another? Jesse Lee Peterson. I'm like, oh my goodness. Candace Owens. I was like, oh, who is everybody? Oh, oh, you know, white people, stop being scared of black people. Like, damn, these boys, you talking about lost in the sauce? But I digress. They're not even worth talking about. That, that was a boy, you talking about super duper idiots. But they got a lot of little lesser known ones out there teaching with platforms, teaching the same all inclusive lies. Because look what this says here Enoch chapter 12. Before all these things, Enoch was concealed. Before all these things, Enoch was concealed. Nor did any one of the sons of men know where he was concealed. Now, Jasher chapter 3 talks about this as a reference. You go read Jasher chapter 3. And by now, you should know Jasher is just Genesis with all of the details. And Jasher talks about Enoch too, just like Genesis talks about Enoch. But Jasher gives you more information. Jasher turns you right back to the book of Enoch. But you can read about Enoch, you know, kind of staying away from the people as much as he could. But then coming to the people to teach the people. And the people came to him because they wanted the word, not like many of our people. I don't know where he all at. No, they ran towards Enoch. Kings ran, princes ran, judges ran to him, poor people, rich people. Everybody was running to Enoch because they wanted to know what Yahuwah was saying to them in the last days. They wanted to know. They were intelligent. Yeah, like, I want to know. Just like some of us right now, we want to know. That's why we're here, to teach and share and learn. But we want the truth. We don't want religious lies and false prophets and messiahs. Forget that crap. They can keep that shit. We want the truth. And nothing but the truth. Book of Enoch is a part of that truth. So let me teach you a little bit more about it. Or about him. He was wholly engaged with the holy ones, means the angels, and with the watchers in his day. I, Enoch, was a blessing, the great Yahuwah, the king of peace. I, I'm going to read it again, chapter, verse 3, chapter 12, verse 3. I, Enoch, was, was blessing the great Yahuwah, the king of peace. In other words, he said, I was praying. I was interceding with him or interacting with him, meditating on with him or meditating on him day and night, just like David said in Psalms chapter one, meditating on him day and night. That's what he means here. I was blessing the great Yahuwah, the king of peace. Yahuwah is the king of peace. Not no Jesus, no one else or Yahushua, whatever new name they gave him. He used to be called Baal and before that Lucifer. You got many names and none of them mean a damn thing to you, Israel, if you're Israel. Well, it means something if you follow them, but it has nothing to do with who we go to for redemption. Again, don't take your brother's word for it. Well, take my word for it as long as I'm giving it to you from the book. Let me say that correctly. And if you go read Isaiah chapter 43, from the first verse to the last verse, you're going to see that Yahuwah, the same Yahuwah that he's talking about, is your Redeemer. He's your only Savior, Israel. 
No one else. And if we try to go to someone else, he's going to get jealous and he's going to destroy us according to his word. Why would you risk being destroyed because they're telling you that you have another savior when he says he's sovereign, there is no other savior but him for Israel. The heathens have many saviors, Buddha, Yahushua, they have many of them. Kali, Krishna, Allah. But Israel, we have one sovereign, Yahuwah. Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Yahuwah, our Elohuah, is one Allah. One. Not three, not two, one. No three and one. One. Again, 12 and 3, Enoch. I, you know, I, Enoch, was blessing the great Yahuwah, the king of peace. And behold, the watchers called me Enoch, the scribe. Then Yahuwah said unto me, Enoch, scribe of the righteous, go tell the watchers of heaven who have deserted the lofty skies and their holy everlasting station who have been polluted with women. In other words, they came down here and slept with women. This is important. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. And have done as the sons of men do. See, women were made for us. We were made for women. Who have done as the sons of men do by taking to themselves women and who, have been, who have been greatly corrupted on this earth. That on the earth they shall never obtain peace nor remission for their sins. Talking about who? The seed of the watchers who had children with women. For they shall not rejoice, for they shall not rejoice in their offspring, which means children, and they shall behold the slaughter of their beloved. They shall cry for their destruction of their sons, and they shall petition forever, but they shall not obtain mercy and peace. Who? Who shall not obtain mercy and peace? The children of the offspring of the fallen who were born through women. So how is everybody saved? How is, you, how is all of us the children of the Most High? When it clearly states here that some of the children that are here, some of the people that are here, many of the populations that are here are offspring of, of fallen angels. We call them demons. But they're not demons. They're bodies with no spirit. That's why they can be so cruel and merciless, slaughtering, murderous, pedophiles, proud, magnificent liars, swift, quick to run to do evil. So is a discord amongst the brethren, our people, turning us against each other, finding sellouts inside of Israel to destroy the truth of Yahuwah. The Whitlocks, the Owens, the Jakes, the Dows, the Jennings, etc. But it says here, let me read it again to you. Start verse, verse 6. They have, they have done as the sons of men do by taking to themselves women who have been greatly corrupted on the earth. That's why Yah is telling our daughters, sisters, that's why he's telling us, and go read Jubilees uh, 30 and 11. Go read Tobit 4 and 12. Go read Deuteronomy uh, 7 and 3. 7, 2, 7, 3. Why do you think he's putting all that in there? And that's why he's saying don't interact with them. Don't have, don't be with them. Don't reproduce with them. Because they are corrupted. They are polluted. It just is what it is. He's not being harsh. He's not being a bigot. We're not being harsh. We're not being bigots. We're just being transparent. So we can wake our brothers and sisters up. And if you have, you know, were seduced or, or deceived through religion to think that that was okay, then repent and then separate. Don't repent and stay. To repent means to turn back, means to correct the folly. You can't say I repented of sin and keep on sinning. I'm a repentant murderer, but I'm still taking contracts to kill.
Do you want to be in the elect? Or not? So no, we're not all yas. Although Christianity and all of those Islam and all of them, the universal religion, we welcome everybody. That was old heathen we were looking at earlier today. He was tearing up the New Testament. I give him that much credit. One of them fake, fake ones over there in the Middle East, wherever he's from, probably new, who knows where he's from. Talking about all the consistencies in the New Testament. <laughs> and he's right. I give him that much credit. Still a lying demon, but he's right about that. I'm not going to put that in link because I'm going to put the other one in the link. But it's out there. You can find it. What do you say again? The sons of men, by taking to themselves women who have been greatly corrupted on the earth, that on the earth they shall never obtain peace and remission of sin. What does that mean? They can't be forgiven, brothers and sisters. I thought they say all can repent. Isn't that what they talk about in Romans? Thou confess with thy mouth, believe in our heart. Romans 10 and 9. So who's telling the truth here? Paul? The man who in Romans 7 says, I'm a wicked, lying, demon, no good, devil, and sinful man. <laughs> the same man who told you, I prefer you not to have a woman. That one. Now what he said, I prefer all men be like me. So what that say to you, sister? <laughs> this man telling you, you're believing in a man who telling men, they don't want you. He, if I were you, I wouldn't have none of them. So what is that going to do for, you know, the book says, be fruitful and multiply. How did that work then? You see the inconsistency right there? Daughters, sisters, mothers. But he said they will never obtain peace and they don't. Look at them. They're warriors. They go around looking. That's in their, that's in their flesh. If they don't have a war, they'll find a war. If there's no, if there's peace, they, you better believe they'll find a way to create trouble. Oh, I don't. You don't do what I tell you. I'm firing you. They, I mean, they're gonna cause chaos. That's their job. They love it. They go in there and they give it. They do evil and then they hold themselves not accountable. They just justify. Well, you know, he deserve it anyway because you know you never know about them people. And yet you got sellouts among Israel telling us that those people are our friends. Those things are our friends. The book called them Gentiles or Heathens. He said they can't be forgiven of their sin. If they can't be, they can't be. For they shall not rejoice in their children. <laughs> That's why their children, by the thousands now, are falling <laughs> dead from opioid overdoses and more. Their reproduction is down big time. <laughs> yeah, it's judging them. He's judging many of us because many of us love their ways. He said, don't learn the ways of the heathens. But since many of us are following our people, Israel following their ways, the same judgment that's being applied to them are being applied to those, the two-thirds of Israel who, who love them. Just can't get enough of them. Make every excuse on earth to, to cover up for them. Their agents, their priests, preachers, and evangelists and bishops. Well, yeah, they huff, puff, and make a lot of noise, but go find, go look in their closet and see what's happening back there. That's when you're going to really find out the truth. You know, they used to be detectives, <laughs> and now they're Israelites. I mean, teachers of Israel, say that the right way. But they still love them some Jesus. Hmm. Whose side you think they're on? Teaching the same lies the heathens teach. Oh yeah, for money, of course. He said, but they shall not rejoice in their offspring, and they shall behold the slaughter of their children, and they shall cry for the destruction of their sons, and they shall petition for forever, but they're never going to obtain mercy and peace. Never means never, means there's no possibility of it. But they use Christian doctrine and religion to tell us, oh no, they could be saved too. Hmm. 
Well, now you know the truth. What you do with that truth is up to you. But at least somebody out here loved you enough to say it. Some of us were born, you know, <laughs> with these tongues. Sometimes our own demise, we, I readily admit, harsh and brutal, <laughs> I've been called. But my heart isn't. But Isaiah 58 say, what? Well, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Does it not say that? Let's go to that and then we're done. Isaiah 58. Oh, look at this. Turn right to it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm not exaggerating. And I didn't have it marked. I mean, I didn't have a bookmark. Oh, it's marked. Because I do study. It says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a chauffeur. And show my people their transgression, the house of Jacob their sins. That's my job. That's all of our job, those the elect of Abba Yahuwah. So that's what we're called to do. You don't get to sit this one out. That being said, <laughs> I want to thank you, brothers and sisters, for your time. We're learning, we're growing. There's something coming, brothers, on the earth. Things that you've never seen. They're going to tell it, oh, this is some kind of uh, blue beam and all kind of stuff they're going to say to deceive the people. Or oh, this is artificial intelligence, not real intelligence. Or oh, this is just bored B-A-R-D. Or oh, this is, you know, AI or chat GP. They're going to give you every kind of deceptive lie to keep you from understanding what you're seeing is truth. Book said there's going to be such horrifying things that people are going to be dropping from heart attacks when they see it. Yeah, they'll be seeing things. You'll be seeing things in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your driveway, up and down your street. Some call them zombies. Some others call them ghosts. But whatever they are, you better believe it's they're, 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 they're there to be, they're there for the accursed. Those who have rejected y'all's truth. And they, their, their children have released them back upon the earth. That's what all these explosions and bombs and bombing up places in the ocean water, the Leviathans, the behemoths, all of these darkness things are in the darkness are now coming out, CERN included. CERN is nothing but a portal and there's seven of them. These seals are being broken so these things could be released back upon the earth. And they're using movies and everything else to seduce you, to make you, how you say, to numb you up. To get you numb. Like Novocaine when you go to the dentist so you don't feel the pain, so you don't understand the, 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 the harm. <laughs> then that's what they're doing. That's why they're pushing all these demon movies and spiritual wickedness and, and monsters and gods and etc. To, to get you numbed up, get you accustomed to it. So wake up, Israel. Listen, learn. I ask that you share this message, thumb up this message if you thought it was helpful, educational. And last but not least, uh, you know, I want to thank, you know what I'm saying, all of you brothers and sisters out there who have been in support of, this, of, of the channel. Uh, Sister Coke, thank you for your British pounds. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, all of, the, all of the help matters. It makes a difference. So I want to thank you in advance and I pray that y'all continue to put upon your heart to support. That being said, that being said, study to show yourself approved. Time to get in the book, brothers and sisters. Meditate upon that word day and night because what's coming, if you're not ready, you're not sealed, that guard or that shield is not around you, the guard, G-U-A-R-D, not G-O-D. If it's not around you, from Yahuwah, you're going to be vulnerable. And if you're not careful, you're going to be harmed. I don't want that to happen. This is your brother, DFG. Yahuwah, Shalom.